You don't ever have to be afraid of anything in life as long as you have these two tools. Praying or affirmations, if you don't like the word prayer, and crying. And you might think, well, that's ridiculous. I don't need to pray or cry. You, you might be right. I find that with prayer and crying, I can handle any situation that comes up in life. That allows me to not be afraid then. I don't have to be afraid of what's going to happen. I know that I can pray and cry my way through it. I don't have to be afraid of the pain of even things like dying because I know I can pray and cry my way through it. I'm grateful I didn't live that way most of my life. Most of my life, I thought prayer was stupid or useless. I remember praying for things as a teenager and not getting them and thinking, this is dumb, this is pointless. And I thought crying was for a wussy or for someone who wasn't a real man. And so for most of my life, I held all this pain and suffering inside and I was afraid of dealing with more because I already had enough. I thought I already had enough pain and suffering, so I was always afraid of dealing with more. I was always afraid of the next pain or the next hard thing in life. I was consistently thinking worst case scenario, and my biggest fear was death. I thought that there was just no way to handle that based on how I was living, and that's true. That's true. If you don't use prayer or affirmations and crying, life is really hard. Look at a baby, and I got to see some babies yesterday. When things make them unhappy, they scream and cry about it. You know what they do? They get over things fast too. They don't sit there pissed off all day plotting on how to get back at whatever theoretically caused them a problem. They cry and scream about it, and then they're over it. Then they're happy again. I know Jesus said that you should live like little children. And that is very valuable advice, regardless of where you believe Jesus fits in the world. That's very valuable advice. I'm looking at a miracle with my daughter coming into the world. And here's what's cool. I know that she has as much to teach me about how to live as I have to teach her. Most of the things I have to teach her are practical things like talking and interacting with other people. And most of what she has to teach me is the very basics, the very simple way of living. Honest, transparent. If life makes you mad, you sit there and cry and scream about it. And then you're over it. I've spent years mad at things in my life. That if I would have cried and screamed about them, they would have been over with a lot sooner. Now I'm grateful. I have the tools of prayer and crying. I know that, for example, getting through childbirth with my wife and getting through the having a newborn those are things before that I would have thought were really overwhelming that I would have thought oh I don't know how I'm going to deal with this it's going to be so hard it's going to be so painful I don't know how I can deal with it and now I know when it gets challenging I'll pray and when it gets really challenging I'll cry and then everything will be just fine often if done correctly Something like a fight or an argument with a loved one can be over and fully processed and done in 30 minutes or less. I know my wife and I, we've loved each other and had a great relationship the whole time. We used to drag things out for days sometimes and it hurt. It hurt the whole time. And now we rarely drag things out for more than a few minutes because we honestly both don't want to suffer. And we both have very firmly entrenched the tools of prayer and crying. And you might look at it and say, oh, you're not manly because you cry or that's so shameful. However you look at it, it works and it works really well. And I've had the ability to do that my whole life. If a child cries about things and gets over them quickly, that's a good way of living. Now, a child doesn't necessarily even need prayer or affirmations because they don't even have that. They can just kind of do that automatically. I remember being able to pray as early as I can remember and to try and think positive things as early as I can remember. I want to be a good son. I want to be a good boy. 
I can remember being able to think that as early as I can remember. With the tools of prayer and crying, you can get through anything. And you might worry about the embarrassment. What if I break down and cry at a bad time? Would you rather be embarrassed or would you rather feel better? I know most of every moment in my life I'd rather feel better. I don't care if I'm a little embarrassed crying in the movies or crying out somewhere in public or crying in my car. If I'm feeling good, everyone on earth is better off. If I'm feeling good and taking care of myself, I'm a better driver. I'm a better video maker. I'm a better husband. I'm a better father, I'm sure I will be. I'm a better family member, better friend, better coworker, better person walking on the street. If I'm holding in my rage, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. You're all jerks. I'm not going to treat anyone good. And I know that because I've done that a lot in my life. I'd get mad about something. I'd hold on to it all day. It'd be little. It'd be real small, usually some stupid thing. And then everyone that came across me that day would catch it. The cashier at the grocery store would catch it. My personal trainer at the gym would catch it. 15 other drivers on the road would catch it with me cutting them off or speeding or tailgating them. Everyone in my day would catch it. And then the family and friends would catch it the worst. My wife, my mom, my brother, my friends. If I'm not using prayer and crying, everyone else in my life suffers more and I suffer the most because I have to witness all of my own cruelty to other people. With prayer and crying, it's amazing how good they work. And I think the more times you pray, the better. And I try to pray to be a good person and to be grateful. Even driving, I pray to be a good driver. Please let me be a good driver right now. That's what everyone else needs me to do right now is be a good driver. Not tailgate them, not cut them off, not run them off the road, not slam on my brakes in front of them and, you know, flip them off. People need me to be a good driver. There's other people with their kids in the car. There's other people who are struggling, who are having a bad day, and they don't need me adding to it. And that goes for everything in life. I'm grateful that crying works so good when it gets tough, I go lay down somewhere and cry and then it's better. And then it's better. I used to drink because I wanted to feel better. And sure, it would work for a little while. I'd feel better for a little while. But then I'd feel even worse than I did to start with. And then I'd want to do it all over again. Crying doesn't come with all those negative things that all of these other coping mechanisms come with. Any other way you try and handle your feelings, nothing is more simple than crying. The fact that children cry is proof. They know how to live right. They just came from not being the opposite of death or the same as death, depending on how you look at it. They just came into being. They're already programmed with the right way to deal with their feelings. And what most of us experience is getting a bunch of messed up ways to deal with our feelings as we get older. We get given all these things, men especially, we get anger. You're going to get mad. You don't cry. You're a man. You get mad. When someone says something you don't like, you get mad. You tell them. You cuss them out. You swear at them. You threaten violence. That's what most men around the world are taught in respect to how you deal with the same feelings a little boy would cry over. And then we wonder why we have problems like domestic violence. We wonder why when you have men out there committing all these crimes. If we all could just cry more, it'd be a lot easier. You wouldn't need to go rob a bank if you just sit there and cry that you're broke and then go apply for a job. No, I'm mad. I'm, I ought to have this money. I'm going to go stick a gun in someone's face and take that money. You just sit there and cry, man. This sucks. I'm broke. And then all of a sudden you feel better right away. Oh, okay. Well, maybe I can go get a job. I probably don't want to do something terrible to another person because I feel better now. And I've done a lot of stupid, hurtful things in my life. And I'm grateful that life has been so forgiving and understanding with me. It's my duty to pay that forward to you, to share what I've learned with you so that if you want to learn it the easy way you can, 
I know I pray now to have the easy lesson. Please, God, give me the easy lesson today. If you give me the easy lesson, I'll try and listen to it. You can always have the easy lesson in life if you're willing to listen. If you're not willing to listen, you'll get the hard lesson. I know I've gotten a lot of hard lessons. And I don't have that high of a pain threshold. It's pretty easy for me to break down and cry. And yet I feel better and I move on. I live most of my life in peace and serenity now. And w even when I am peaceful and serene, I keep praying. I keep praying. I figure if I preventatively pray, that will handle a lot of potential problems before they come up. If I pray to be a good husband before my wife and I disagree on something, then I am not willing to disagree with her on something. If I'm praying to be the best family member I can, then I don't start that fight with my mom that gets all of us all upset and that then I have to cry over. The more I pray, the less opportunities there are to cry. The more I pray, and if you don't like the word prayer, I like the word affirmations also. I know I have a very diverse following and I'm grateful for that. The word affirmations is also good. You don't have to actually pray specifically. I think it's easier that way. But you can just say things like, I want to be the best husband I can now. I want to be the best son or daughter I can be right now. When your parent's angry and mad, and you, I, please let me be the best son or daughter I can be right now. That's an affirmation. It also can be a prayer. But you see, the most simple, the affirmation is very simple. I'm a good person. I'm a good person. That's a good affirmation. Please let me be a good person. I want to be a good person. These affirmations and prayers replace a lot of that negative self-talk. For example, I'm a bad person. I'm a jerk. I'm mean. I hate people. When you produce affirmations and prayers, you crowd out the room for all those negative things like people are jerks, people are mean, I can't stand people. It hurts me even to say those things now because I'm people. If I can't say anything about people that doesn't apply to me and so I don't want to hurt myself. I've hurt myself enough and I pray that I don't go hurting myself more because I will then hurt other people. Even if it's just saying something rude or driving inconsiderate, it causes real hurt to other people. And other people are just like me. So I'm grateful I have the chance here to share what I've learned with you so that if you choose to, you can learn it easier than I did. You don't have to get to the point where you don't want to live. You don't have to go around and cause pain and suffering for all the people in your life that love you. You don't have to burn through a bunch of relationships. You don't have to go around treating everyone like crap before you'll actually sit there and cry and feel better. You don't have to hurt and poison yourself with addictions and drugs and all these negative coping mechanisms. You can just pray and when things really you can't handle it, you cry about it, pray and cry, and then they get better. Little children know this. I'm grateful that I now understand this and that I practice this. I practice it relentlessly. I pray and cry relentlessly. In fact, if more than a week goes by without me crying, I start getting a little concerned. Like, all right, what am I bottling up right now? What am I holding on to? What pain am I wrapping my hands around and calling mine? This is mine. This is my pain and suffering. It's mine. Because when you cry, it's obvious it's everyone's pain and suffering. When some tragic event happens, it's not your pain and suffering. It's everyone's pain and suffering. And if you cry, it's obvious, oh, this is something we're all dealing with. When someone dies you love and care about, it's not your pain and suffering, it's everyone's. It's all humanity's loss and death. Everyone, there's people going around dealing with loss and death everywhere. And when you cry, you don't feel so alone. You realize the simple truth that babies know. When you cry, you feel better. And you purge. It's like throwing up. When you have negative energy in you, you cry. It purges that negative energy. And that's why babies, they purge. They purge everything all the time. So I hear at least. And theoretically, I know because I was a baby. You purge everything bad all the time. You don't hold on to bad things inside of you. 
So prayer helps me to not take in bad things. And when I do take in something bad, when I do take possession of something toxic, then crying helps me to get rid of it. That allows me to live a clean, peaceful life the same way a child lives. Free of the burdens of the world, eager and curious about life. I pray today to live like a child. A child who's willing to cry when things get difficult. And I pray to use the wisdom given to me by my elders who are wise, who've experienced life, and who've told me the power of prayer and who practice it themselves. So I pray to pray. That's one of the prayers I pray in the morning is when I need help, please let me ask for it. Let me never think I don't deserve help or don't need help. And so I pray that sharing this with you is as useful for you as it is for me. I share this with you knowing there will be a time when I don't remember making these videos. I make them with the hope that I can watch them when I need to, regardless of whether I remember making them or not. I'm thankful you're here and you've spent this time with me. I appreciate every moment you've spent here and I hope you have a great day today.